welcome to Progressive Television on, ra Progressive Radio on TV. Uh, what a crazy night it is. If you're watching this right now, watching it live yeah, on Tuesday, February 2nd, um, we're, we're live in studio here in beautiful Willamette Falls, uh, the Oregon City at the Willamette Falls Media Center, and boy, we have a lot to talk about. Um, you know, it's funny, I took last month off, and of course, I made that decision before January 6th, oh, Lord. and we all know what happened in January 6th, uh, the, uh, the sinking of our democracy, uh, the, the attempt to drown our democracy in a bathtub, if you, to paraphrase uh, uh, Grover Norquist. Um, but I'll tell you, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a lot more things. But I do want to just initially start out by introducing my co-host tonight, uh, Sherry Meredith, M Morich Meredith is. Morich Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I I'm going to call you by. I I'll call you by your your, maid, your married name, uh, Meredith. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good. And uh, Sherry has been a longtime co-host with me over the over t over the years. Gosh, over the years. Because, yeah, you know, we've done, we were doing this show originally in cahoots with uh, Dr. Caleb Burns, who would, had done this show for over a decade. And so um, it's good to think about him for a second. I yeah. haven't thought about Caleb for a while. Yeah. And uh, so in, in, in honor of Caleb and his approach to politics, I think we will just dive right in. Sherry, Sir. how are you feeling since the events of January 6th, and how are you feeling I'm about our democracy? I'm furious. Mm -hmm. I'm completely furious. The events of uh, January 6th was uh, basically sticking a, heart, a, a knife in the heart of our nation. It, the, the capital is the soul of the United States. It's where everything, everything in our nation, hap the, to build our nation happened in those halls, mm -hmm. in that building, in those rooms, everything, our Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, all of it was built, the foundation of our democracy was built in that building by the founders of this nation, and they were slapped in the face. It, it was literally under, slapped in literally. the face. And under the umbrella, under the premise of liberating our country under the under an amazingly false premise yeah good american citizens have been over time convinced through evil propaganda that our government our government is was uh, trying to gosh how do you describe i mean how do you even pull describe one over the on them yeah that's what they, they are so convinced that we, the people, mm -hmm. you, me, the people here in the audience, we're trying to pull something over on them. Yes, Trump did earn, I guess, more votes than any other sitting president in history, but you know what? Biden got more votes than anyone ever, mm -hmm. right? That's right. That's right? So, and these people, Trump and uh, Jordan and Lindsey and, uh, McConnell, surprisingly, was not necessarily part of that, but he was complacent, uh, encouraged mobs to go and attack the foundation of our nation, and I'm furious today. Right. And I'm even more furious at their, their inability to see the devastation as it was and fight against it, convicting on this side of the impeachment, right. right? He was already impeached. He's been impeached twice. He has not been convicted, and mm -hmm. Lord knows why. Well, I, I think <laughs> we do know why, unfortunately, because the long-term propaganda machine of the GOP and of Fox News and of those special big interests that have been funding everything from the Tea Party to the insurrection on the steps of the Capitol. I mean, there's been stories that have been coming out where hundred, a, a major fundraiser uh, on staff for the Trump campaign 
actually coordinated the rally that was held before yeah. the Capitol, yeah. before the Capitol riots. They bust people in. They bust people in. They mm -hmm. had, it was very well funded organization. I mean, many of you have seen the clips of the Trump family and, uh, in the tent during the riots and they were watching on large monitors the activity of everything that was going on. I didn't see that. Oh my goodness, and they're sitting there uh, laughing and, and smiling and, and, and reveling in, in, in their ability to, to, to manipulate and, and persuade these people to do what they're doing. Um, you know, it just blows me away. I mean, it smacks of authoritarianism, it smacks of Dictatorships. I mean, yep. I remember watching a TV. Yep. I remember watching a, a show where they were comparing, directly comparing, the uh, the methodology of Trump and his messaging and how he has used language, has used his his bully pulpit to promote these types of authoritarian strategies for yep. uh, taking over for changing people's minds. Yeah. You know, for 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 lying to people. I mean, it just I never thought it would happen to, the, to us. I never thought it would get to that extent. The problem you is, know? from the pundits that I've been listening to, mm -hmm. um, because you're, you know that I listen to quite a few pundits across many different genres, be it a newspaper, uh, YouTube, uh, uh, independent journalists, uh, uh, regular political pundits. Trump was so incompetent that his, whatever he was trying to do didn't happen. Right, And what a lot of them, even lawmakers, are saying is we need to be careful because the next person is going to be smarter, going to be competent, and going to have a better messaging platform. Mm -hmm. Hitler had a majority of the vote. Mm -hmm. well, Nixon, to the day he died, had fans. Sure. And, you know, and just by that same note, you know, the, that's, that's another reason why we must punish those that participated yes. in the direct treasonous sedition of our country yes, through those riots. Not only those that participated in the riots, but those that instigated the riots are just as guilty of, of this fundamental betrayal of the American democracy and of our, uh, of, of our values. Uh, of, of our existence as a as the a, rule as a country. of law the rule of law absolutely and and, yeah. and i don't mean to interrupt but what killed me even worse what was just uh, this was almost comical mm -hmm. okay you know i i i want to say served but i did i worked as a federal civilian contractor for 10 years four and a half for the army and six with the navy i have an understanding of how the military works and in conjunction with how Cong with how Congress works, especially in appropriations, but, but I have heard and, and did do research on how our government works with the military. There were actually people out there, this is how they got people to believe, QAnon got people to believe and come to the Capitol and tra ransack it the way they did. They were saying that, and, and this is part of the story, that if everybody needs to just go to the inauguration and um, sit through it and know that Trump is still president in the background, he's still going to be president, and in the middle of the inauguration, the military is going to come in and grab uh, Biden and Obama and, and Hillary and everybody who was there and go set him in front of a military tribunal. And I was waiting for next they're going to be hit with the, the execution by gunshot, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so for people who don't know, in this nation, that does not happen, mm -hmm. okay? The only people who go in front of a military tribunal or a military court of any sort are military people who do crimes, mm -hmm. you know? Right. The civilians, even if a civilian person hurts a military person, that civilian is seen in a civilian court. Federal, federal, probably, because it's military, your government property. So they would be seen in a federal court, civilian. Our Americans do not go in front of military tribunals. We are not Iraq, or, uh, the way Iraq used to be. We are not Afghanistan. We are not a Middle Eastern developing nation. We are the United States of America, and we are a land of laws. And for the Republicans to stand there and allow Trump to have his way 
with our nation is ridiculous and it needs to not happen. This is a time for Biden to stand up and mm. say enough. Amen. You know, and I think it goes even beyond our leadership, you know, and I think Joe Biden is at least beginning to correct the norms that have been uh, taken advantage of by Trump and the norms that have been flouted uh, uh, by Trump. And it fundamentally changed. It was, a, it was an attempt to fundamentally change the basic values of our country. To, uh, and, and Biden is slowly but surely through executive order and through the, the power of the bully pulpit and through his ability now with the majority in Congress in both the Senate and the House I, to, to, make, to correct some of the Trump administration's most obvious attempts at, build, at bringing down our democracy or changing the democracy to, to the government to something in his image. You know, I, it, just, it just amazes me. And, and, and you know what else really just shocks me is the acquiescence of so many people. You know, I, I, I do understand that this has been uh, developing and this has been evolving over a 10, 15, 20 year period of time. But to see it come to a fruition oh, point no, like the way it's been longer than that. Yeah, I mean, well, I, you could point back to the Southern strategy as the actual beginning yeah. of, the, of, the, uh, of the GOP uh, a, a pushing towards or uh, embracing uh, uh, racist mes uh, methods, uh, dog whistles, and, and to try to rally the white vote mm -hmm. against the minorities. To put but I mean, modern them. day started back in the early 90s with, I want to say, with Rush Limbaugh, mm -hmm. right after Reagan got into office in the mid 80s. That's, right. That's a lot of the people who we are dealing with today were part of getting Nixon out and bringing Reagan in later. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, you know, and Reagan, for instance, back in the 80s, as many of us know, back in the 80s, he, he was the first one to bust a federal union, the air, uh, the air controller union. And then he took that. He also changed the fairness doctrine, that mandatory yes. rule that all media must I have know. show both sides of an issue oh, and at no charge. Goodness. And that, in turn, begat the Fox News, Roger Ailes founding Fox News, and then the Rush Limbaugh, and the, the, the rise of talk yep. radio. And then in 1996, our lovely Congress passed the Freedom of Communications Act, which did a lot more damage to our ability in the broadcast world to tell the truth and to keep mm -hmm. keep the lines. When I, I had an FCC operator's permit, and when I found out when I went to go renew it that I didn't need to, that online or on-air personalities didn't need the permit anymore, the whole point of having that permit and going through that process was to le learn those laws and learn right. the rules. And now there's crazy people. <laughs> now there's crazy, and I told them there's gonna be crazy people. You know what? It sounds like we have a call, Sherry. And Let's I have ahead. a text to share after the call. Okay, sounds good. Let's go ahead and bring this person onto the line. Hey, B, may I help you? Oh, hi. Uh, I'm just on the line and my call dropped. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, and I think I just accidentally dropped it again. <laughs> I have a tweet here on, I'm from wait Lindsey a Graham. And let them patch it through the proper way here, but... Um, okay, let's try this one more time. I'm going to do line one here and get them on the air. Hi, good evening. Welcome to the TV show. How are you tonight? Doing well, Moses. Sherry, this is Eric Squires. How are you guys today? Awesome. Eric, thank you for calling in. How, what's on your mind? Uh, well, I wanted to share that uh, uh, first, I'm really excited that you're doing what you're doing and that there's a lot of people who are not exercising the right to call like they're not exercising the right to vote. Thank you. That's right. Thank you for that. I th you know, and, and, and if we are able to Thank you. change the opinion of one or two people out there, of our viewers, or to motivate someone to go vote, it, can, it makes it worthwhile, yeah? I'd love to see more people uh, calling in. But what I wanted to do is uh, uh, just ask, what do you think progressives should be doing in order to welcome the attrition of registered Republicans that are leaving their party? And I just uh, uh, ask for whatever you might uh, offer to, uh, in the world of big tent politics, to welcome people that are just disgusted and 
and leaving uh, the Republican Party, uh, particularly in light of the things that you were opening your show with, which was the assault on the Capitol, um, Trump politics, et cetera. Um, just closing on, on my remarks, and I'll take your, your comments offline, is that uh, I was just reading in the, the newspaper that a lot of uh, parties were seeing uh, Republicans change affiliation, uh, particularly to uh, a non-affiliated or an independent voter in Oregon. And uh, uh, I'm just wondering what the, the progressive party might have to offer them, uh, particularly in the age of a Biden presidency. So uh, uh, thank you for... Uh, uh, you know, my enduring my comment, and uh, I'd welcome any comments you have. Eric, thank you very thank much, you. and I appreciate this. You know, this is a really good question. That is. Um, we've got, okay, let me take this, let me take a shot at this one, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to pass mm -hmm. it off to you. I think we have a golden opportunity now, right now, as progressives within the Democratic Party, as, as Democratic Party members, to, uh, to, honestly and earnestly appeal to those voters that are disenfranchised by the GOTVs, uh, pardon me, by the GOP's uh, uh, evolution to radicalism like they are. And so I think it's going to kind of be, uh, it's up to us as individuals to try to find that common ground. And I think that common ground is always in those values, those shared values that we both, that we all share as Americans, quite frankly. You know, what, it, what do we want? We want to have an opportunity to make a good living wage job. What do we want? We want to be able to guarantee a good, bright future for ourselves and for our children. What do we want? We want to be able to have a good education base, you know, a good, good education. We want good parks to live in, good air to breathe. These are all common shared values. And I think that the, it, it's up to us as Democrats, especially us, up to us as progressive Democrats, to be able to start those conversations with those folks and to do it in a way that is non-threatening, to do it in a way that is, that is beneficial, that, 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 that starts out by having respect for each side. Now, I know that they have, <laughs> and that's the challenge, you know? We, we've gotten so polarized in, in life of late, you know, so tribal in, in life of late, it's hard to let those defenses down and just have honest conversations and actually learn from those honest conversations. So I, I think it takes, uh, in answer to that question, I think it takes a real dedication for us to be able to find that common ground. It takes a real dedication by us to, uh, to do it in a respectful fashion, to not lower ourselves to what we have just seen, but to bring ourselves up. So that's what I would say. What, what about you? I, I respect your answer. So I'm going to read a tweet here real quick. Mm -hmm. Lindsey Graham, today on Twitter, five hours ago, Lindsey Graham, Republican, GOP in the Senate since the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. In a matter of weeks, Joe Biden has rolled back a substantial part of the gains that took years of the Trump administration to achieve in the fight to stop illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty powerful statement you just made there because and you're just reading what hit your point is well taken obviously they they are still as i'm not done oh there's more that no tweet. i'm not done no it's not the tweet he goes on he goes on and on but basically he's stating here that that all of the executive orders that biden has uh passed or signed off on to uh, overturn the destructive policies of the Trump administration are horrible, <laughs> are horrible. Okay, so here's my answer. Eric, thank you for the call. I, I really appreciated your statement and your awareness to uh, the ability of understanding how, much, how important it is for people to get involved. Uh, vote, call in, get involved in your community, whatever. Honestly, you'd have better luck with a centrist than you would a progressive, unless you are willing to meet in middle ground, right? So the basis of a progressive foundation is universal health care, is $15 minimum wage, is uh, the ability for us, Democrats and Republicans, independents, whomever, to walk out on those streets without worrying that we're gonna die because some crazy person decided to shoot us up. If you wanna get along with 
progressives and you want to be invited into the progressive infrastructure, my goodness, yes, please, because at least we're halfway sane and we aren't gonna go tear up some, the Capitol and, because we believe in some QAnon thing. Mm -hmm. But you, you gotta, I mean, Joe Manchin is the perfect, is the perfect example of why I'm saying what I am. Joe Manchin is a centrist Democrat out of West Virginia. West Virginia, not the poorest, but one of the poorest states in the nation. He is saying no to a $15 an hour minimum wage because that means it's $11 an hour in his state, right? The, the minimum wage has been $7.25 for over 10 years. In here, in, in Oregon, we, we, you couldn't buy a week's worth of groceries in $7.25 an hour. Yes, the cost of living in West Virginia might be half, but don't those people still deserve to make an honest living? What, when I was growing up, the big saying was, you get an honest day's work for an honest, or you get an honest day's pay for an honest day's work. Well, I'm sorry, corporations ripping off the government with aid to their employees, us taxpayers having to pay that at a cost of $2.63 per each of our tax dollar to uh, states like Kentucky. That's not fair to us. Why can't the government help subsidize small businesses who might be having struggles paying $11 an hour so their people can live, work an honest day's work and get an honest day's pay? That's all they're asking for. That's all we're asking for. You know, and I think the challenge is, too, is that we're talking about a political system right now that has gone to the extremes as far as its uh, uh, focus on the wrong people, on the wrong groups. Agreed. You know, yes. I think that, you know, there's multiple, there's so many examples of tax law, of favorable tax laws for businesses, of favorable treatment of businesses, of of groups that have money and influence and you know versus you know one person a constituent having a challenge getting in to find out when they qualify for a covid relief pack you know for for a, a, a stimulus i hate the word stimulus check but the the uh, uh, the checks from the you know assistance from the government you out know, of our tax dollars we right, paid that money right. you know i i i it just it's a it's a and i think that but it does go to show that we do have much in common ground, both the Republicans that are feeling disenfranchised with how radical that their, their party has become, and quite frankly, Democrats that have gotten radical or to behind what they, their, their party has done. And I say radical, you know, people get offended if I use radical GOP and radical Democrat in the same sentence because of it might not, you know, they feel it might not be uh, equal weight or equal definition. But on a political philosophical scale, as far as how angry they are, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's equal in that sense. They just have different solutions. Their solution was to blow up the government and to, and to get radicalized. Our solution is, is to get radicalized about our solutions. Well, and that's, that is wonderful. <laughs> what a great point. And if radical means for public investment in education, health care, and jobs, why are Republicans against that? Uh, I don't get it. I don't I, understand. Well, I, I, you know, it, before you could have said that it was because of their need to kowtow to uh, the elected officials need to kowtow to the big interests and uh, the big business interests and the big money interests that fund a, that end up financing their reelection campaigns, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think now it's it's the what's if there is a silver lining out of the whole pandemic situation that we have had, it's been the the more than graphic illustration of the holes in the social safety net and the holes that we have in our in our basic yeah. uh, human infrastructure and how we treat our citizens in the United States. And we have an opportunity to not only identify them, but to correct them. And so I'm, I'm feeling like many of these solutions that the Democrats have been talking about for years, be it universal health care or be it, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, college, uh, you know, help, making, helping people go to college, et cetera, you know, be it free college or however the package is. We're all still trying to go towards that same goal of, of, of benefiting and helping people through, through this unique situation. Maybe common in. people, but I know of some who say, well, then that's money out of my pocket, mm -hmm. and I want to go buy my car today. I don't want to have to wait. Right, right. Why didn't you save? You, that's this what you would tell well, us I, to I, do? Well, right. I can't go buy my, I, you know, I have wanted a Tesla for years. Uh -huh. You know, and I'm not a dumb person. I have two college degrees. I just can't seem to make a job, get a job earning more than 50000 a year. But, you know, I can't afford a Tesla. I'd have to say, for one, what makes you so special? Well, and you know, it's funny. To, to make money, you have to have money to make. And Exactly. And, and it, you know, lately, I mean, going off on a real quick, more uh, very topical subject, and that is lately there's been this real uh, 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 brouhaha that has been caused on Wall Street for trading uh, because of a Reddit website page called Wall Street Bets, where a whole bunch of people, hundreds of thousands of people, have been collaborating to expose the real dark financial underbelly of Wall Street and how they take advantage of you and your money to be able to, you know, you know, make billion, literally billions, if not trillions of and dollars. Get taxed you know, and, on the and and you know, it's interesting. I, I've been kind of paying attention to that and you see all of these people that are on one hand are not in the financial uh, uh, don't really have the financial, what we would think, the financial ability to become investors, but they're a sacrificing. I mean, I see pictures of, of people that have made, you know, a hundred dollar bet or a hundred dollar investment in a, in a couple shares of this mm -hmm. stock because there is a, on the opportunity on the, uh, to be able to participate mm -hmm. in, in trading in, uh, in Wall Street deals that these big people are, th these big conglomerates are doing I mean, it's a kind of almost a, like it, this, yeah. this decentralization of, of, of Wall Street from the large organizations, you know, limited to only there on the Wall Street trading floors to individuals on your phone. I mean, I can make a day trade in right now. Yeah. You know, I and, could too. It, and it felt so empowering, you know, and, and the ironic thing is, is that they don't understand that. That's another source of income, or that's another source of revenue or money. Savings. Of, uh, that could be really pushed I'm using into mine the, as savings. Yeah. It grows. I mean, it was just kind of sad, though, to see also how many people were on that line, you know, right. between, you know, grasping for the hope of a, of a quick win or a, a solid win on the Wall Street market. I mean, it's not exactly you know, uh, U.S. bonds at one and a half percent. I mean, it's risky, yeah, risky yeah, business, you know? Is, yeah. I mean, uh, so what is my point? My point is, is that we have, once again, this decentralization of power that uh, of late uh, when, on Wall Street, and we're kind of almost trying to, almost seeing it here in our society, in other forms of, in our society as well. I think, you know, you could also say that people, those riots started because of a decentralization, you know, in the fact that they're receiving information, all these propaganda sources, you know, from they can uniquely customize it for themselves and yes. they, they don't get, they're not forced or they're not uh, uh, hearing all sides of the story. They're only hearing their one focused uh, uh, point of view. O reinforced over and over and over because again, they choose day. to right whereas before it was brought to them on a platter now they're just doing the a la carte all over and over and over well and then you to say hey what happened to the party of accountability the party of personal responsibility uh, I don't know what well, then, well, that, that's a fine and dandy and, to get you elected but to actually do it and the thing that killed me was the billionaires on MSNBC and oh that killed that was hilarious I don't remember his name but this guy was on MSNBC and I wish I could remember his name because I died laughing he was sitting there trying to tell the audience of MSNBC that and I saw this on YouTube I don't have cable at home um, that the kids those poor boys in the basement re on reddit and invest watching Robin Hood all day long that 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 deteriorated their mind and 
and kept them from going out and getting a job and, and living a real life and stuff. And the other, the other billionaire crying, literally. And then I read a, a text about another one who said that he lost $3 billion and his wife left him and all of this. Wham! Sorry, really? Yeah, Welcome you know, to my life, right? Pay to play. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, we don't feel sorry for you. No, you don't. I cannot. <laughs> I mean, you know, and it's interesting too. I mean, you know, we're on a Tuesday and that whole Reddit rally has been going on for about five, six days a week, now. Yeah. yeah, about less than a week. And, and it's tumbled today. It tumbled today, but it's all part of the dip that is. is being expected. You know, I, I'll have to admit, I yep. bought two hundred dollars of, of AMC American movie. Oh, I meant to do that today. I, I kind to of buy thought it was cool. I think you know, yeah. and I feel like I'm playing fantasy football. Quite honestly, when I look at the stock, you know, it's only a two hundred dollar investment, but it is. It has the potential. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm no financial expert. Let me just preface right. this by yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. but no, I was able to, you know, I bought these shares at a, basically at around thirteen dollars a piece. So at two, and so I bought one at ten. I bought some at ten, and then I bought some a little bit higher and sort of averaged out, cost averaged out. Right. And you know, so your loss. What are you going to lose? Two hundred dollars. I mean, in the relative. That's scheme, a lot of money to some people. That, that, correct. That is a lot of money. But and the potential for that two hundred dollars, if if the stock was going to rise up into the hundreds of dollars per stock, that $200 could be worth 2000 Well, this young boy, just, he just, was 10 really, years old. I can see how people really get sucked into the whole thing. That's this really little hard. boy was ten year, is 10 years old, and his mom bought him six shares of the GameStop stock mm -hmm. at $6 per share. What, after, the, after what happened a few days ago, he sold out for $3,000. Yeah. And he had it planned where he's going to put all that money and yeah, 10-year-old little kid. Well, see, and that's uh, hey, this this situation gets kind of goes to show you what you individuals can do, you know, just regular people can do and the effect of small amounts of money to be life to, to have a real life-changing effect on them. I mean, you know, so many people are one check away from bankruptcy. I, quite frankly, I think this is a great argument for universal basic income. It is. I mean, you know, if you were to give people a basic a income of, of X amount of money, I mean, let's say just enough to be able to cover the basic needs of a person during the course of a month, that would be one huge pressure being able to take it taken off of our shoulders and that would allow us to be able to focus on other more productive things in life you know I mean it's the whole Star Trek model once you take away the 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 the, the, the importance of money and accumulating money uh, you be you focus on improvement you focus on yourself you focus on the government you know on improving yeah. your your community and focus on other things so yeah. I would venture to say that you know this is just a good example of how a universal basic income could really help, and and let's take that let's take that back even further to our conversation about how the COVID pandemic has really illustrated these little weaknesses that could be benefited through through just some smart solutions like a universal basic income, like universal health care, like you know. Uh, Unemployment that is worthwhile, you know. Uh, yeah. Be it what it may. Yeah. You know, progressive well, solutions because, to all of these challenges. Well, and that's yeah. what we need is progressive solutions to the fact that AI is progressing. Um, Boston Dynamics. If you ever watch Boston Dynamics, um, they are a tech company in Boston, mm -hmm. and they are building some of the most manu some of the most awesome advancements in tools for manufacturing for they have a little dog called spot it's not really a, a dog it's a robot dog called spot mm -hmm. and today i saw one of their video marketing videos where the spot has a camera on the front of it and it goes around to all the different pressure gauges throughout the manufacturing plant where it's at. It could be a water pressure plant or whatever. And it feeds back the information from the camera. The people on the other end, the end users, can see the information on the gauges. Wow. And then it sends alerts. If the people get an alert for like steam is lifting up too high or some emergency happens, they can go and investigate. Spot can be right there. So they're at home 
It's three o'clock in the morning, and Spot is in there checking everything out, and they have other robots that can fix the products, right? They can fix the errors and stuff. And robots, I heard the other day on Wired that robots are actually becoming so advanced that they're going to be able to start fixing themselves. Wow. And I was always okay, mostly, with AI, just because I'm a robot geek. I like, I like robots. Um, so I was totally okay with the, the AI uh, progression until recently when I, because you'd always have to have a human there mm -hmm. to navigate it, to fix it, to take care of it, to maintain it or whatever. Somebody would always have a job, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, I was crushed. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, yay, robot. Oh, <laughs> universal in basic <laughs> income, let's go. Well, you know, I think- So that we you, gotta do something. Well, your point makes up, brings up really two really good points. The fact that we, has, we as an American economy have not made that transition to the future yet in future no. economic uh, opportunities. We're kind of still stuck in the past in the you know, industrial revolution type of a mindset, although there are, of course, examples of companies like Tesla and such that are taking advantage of all of this. And, and I think that that, unfortunately, is the GOP mindset when it comes to clean energy and you know, any kind of a quote, Green New Deal approach because, God forbid, you know, these, these oil and gas interests and mineral interests, you know, lose their funding, you know, or, or not get as much money from, you know. From, See, but, but uh, both but, of but ironically, but ironically, those same businesses are now starting to begin to yes. diversify into yeah. wind and solar and, and yeah. more economical things. I mean, it, it, just a quick example of that yeah. is that they just recently had uh, a bidding. Uh, the, one of the last things that the Trump administration did was allow for bidding for oil leases in the uh, Alaskan uh, Prudhoe horrible. Bay. Mm -hmm. And there was not much interest for no. those mm -mm. because the oil and gas companies, it's just too expensive for them to go through the, the, the pulling of the oil and the refinement of the oil, the transportation of the oil, all the resistance to it and the creation of the pipelines, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. It's just easier to, to not bid on those and, and to start investing into other forms of, 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 of energy. And it's, it's just amazing to me how the GOP and many of its enablers are just so mm -hmm. stuck in that mindset of old technology. And so we should be taking into account that AI is going to be taking the place of many jobs in the future and we need yep. to be make sure that we have training available for these workers that are in, in jobs in, yep. in other growth industries like solar, wind, yep. whatever they may be. But yep. you know, we're, we're still stuck in the whole uh, steel, steel mill Mindset. So a lot of the gas and energy companies over the past 15 years have been merging over to research in more traditional or, or more sustainable uses for energy, solar panels. I, I People are having discussions about the batteries for solar panels and the panels themselves not being biodegradable, but they can be recycled. Mm -hmm. I don't see why they can't be recycled. Um, Exxon has been doing research on wind energy and on some other stuff, if I'm correct. Then, and a lot of the gas companies are doing are doing research. Mm -hmm. So, Biden, one of Biden's primary talking points when he was going to uh, for to be elected was, and I was fascinated by this. A lot of the issues people have with buying electric cars is range anxiety. And my father, mm. before he passed, he got into electric cars the past 10 years before he passed away. And his big issue with the cars that he would look at and a couple that he bought was range anxiety. Some would only go 150 miles per, per charge, others would go 78 miles per charge. Luckily, he lived in town and he just, he was a truck driver, so he only drove it when he was home. But there's cars now, Tesla has one, that will go 230 mm -hmm. miles or mm -hmm. something. But Biden, one of his key infrastructure plans for through something like the Green New Deal is charging stations along the freeways. Imagine how our infrastructure is going to change across the nation for highways, for trains. Mm -hmm. Do you know the, the fastest train in the world runs on magnets? 
right? It it's really it's called the silver bullet and yeah. it's in Japan and they actually built it in 1964 mm -hmm. and they're building another one. Uh, they just actually finished building another one in, in 2019 um, and it should be running as a commuter train soon. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have to catch up. We're yeah. so far behind. And, and you know, and let's face it, you know, the last time that we put a made we made a major investment in the nation's infrastructure was in the Eisenhower administration when he built the, the interstate highway system. There's really been a lot yeah. of neglect ever since then, you know, and then you compound that with the reduction of of, of, of federal funds to states to do the proper maintenance on these bridges and on these highways and then you know you take into account the fact that the states don't have as much funding you know so it's just kind of going on and on what's the what's the end result we have bridges that are falling we have roads that are falling apart with pop sinkholes sinkholes, and sinkholes stuff. et cetera yes. et cetera so going down the mountain know, once again what a wonderful opportunity and time and place to be able to in the yeah. nation's life to to be able to make major investments in our in, in our infrastructure to be able to make major investments in our energy network to be able to make major changes in our social safety net. I mean, my God, what an opportunity we have. And, and it's all been so highlighted by the pandemic. It is so clear now to so many people that, that, that these obvious opportunities for improving our country. What's stopping it? 400 bills on Mitch McConnell's desk right. and the 740 billion dollars to the military. Amen. Amen. And Amen. then of course the 100 plus state uh, Congress uh, people in Congress that actually uh, voted in support of the the fact that they felt that it was a, a bad election or whatever, you know, that, that supported the insurrection for Christ's sake. Oh yeah. You know, I I, I there was like it's 10 so of I mean them. I mean, Cliff Bentz, Congressman Cliff Bentz, our, our own Oregon congressman out there on the other side that took the place of Greg Walden, he joined the crew in denying the results of the election. I mean, my goodness, this is a guy, for, this is one of, this is in Oregon that we're talking about. We're not talking about Florida. We're not talking about, Missouri, uh, you know, some southern state. We're talking about Oregon. So the pervasiveness of the lies and of the, of the collusion it's just amazing to me. It's just right next door to us. And well, the people in Oregon have been brainwashed to believe that the only people who who delegate our senators and our people in Salem is Portland. Yeah. When there's like four counties now that have turned blue. Right. And, oh, and I, it's I, not. You, you have <laughs> so nailed that that one. That's a really good observation. For years, the enemy of the of all the rest of it's been Portland Metro against yeah. the rest of the state, yeah. and it's kind of and there's a, the basis for it, of course, is because the, the population center of the mm -hmm. state is in Portland, and so the majority of the money and policy decisions are going to affect the majority of the people in the state. Now, so there's the argument that has been blossoming up, that has been uh, created that we don't we ignore the rural counties and i'm sure there are examples where they felt like they were being neglected in their needs financially and otherwise from the government but i'm not going to say that 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 is true though in, in in to the to the dramatic effect that they want that they have it as of oh well that's the reason that we need to just you know secede from the from the union or join group join radicals in Coeur d'Alene Idaho to create a new state i mean i just oh, that that one just blows me away but yeah, I thought it solid was. Point. I thought it was awesome. Let him, <laughs> let him. Bye. You know, it, it, I, 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 I so <laughs> that's agree really with you. What from, you want? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you, in that sense. But on the other sense, I think it's the most unpatriotic thing we could do is to let them leave. I mean, what, you know with what the I'm state? Saying? It's I, not I mean, like they're, they're seceding not from anyway. the U.S. Right, right. And you know, hey, and while we're talking about this, because I know that you're going to have a friend of yours calling in here yeah, soon. Yeah, she should call any minute. We are going to talk here for the last part of the show about here locally this radicalism that has occurred through the commissioners of Clackamas County. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. Clackamas County Chair Tootie Smith uh, on record supporting mm -hmm. some of this insurrection stuff and saying all sorts of things that were amazingly insensitive. Uh, Commissioner Mark Schur, oh, he's a he's a peach. He's only the only person I know that has brought together 
hundreds of community groups and elected officials all under one goal to get this guy to resign because of the egregiousness of his comments. Oh, I mean, yeah, this guy horrible. is just, I mean, so we've got, gonna... we've got some real peaches here in Clackamas County as far as their alignment with the GOP the, the, and the extreme views that led to that insurgent. So. We really messed up in Clackamas County, I have yeah. to say. I'm not one who generally votes in primaries. I only vote in the general election usually. Not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. I did not realize that that um, Mark mm -hmm. were both or up Kenny. for re-election. Yeah. Or Ken. Yeah. Ken and Jim were both up for re-election. Hi, thank you for calling Progressive Radio on TV. Hi, it's my pleasure to be with you guys. Thank Hi, you. Hi, Anna. Now, Anna, Hi. Do, tell me your uh, tell me your name again, Anna. I'm sorry. I should, it's Anna. Yeah. So my full name is Anna Tijerina Esquino. Very good. Very good. Uh, and and you are you have been volunteering time in uh, talking to neighbors about this uh, this recall uh, effort for the Tootie Smith. Is that correct? That is correct. I am the chief petitioner right now for the Recall Tootie Smith campaign, and I've been helping organize with our group and also in collaboration with um, now also the people that are that are bringing things to light about Marshall. Well, tell me this. Let's start. Let's start at the beginning. What what motivated you to to get involved and to start this group? Um, a lot of things. I think as as a lot of Americans are, I you know, was was really focused on politics um, more recently, especially with all of the things that have happened over the last year, it became really important to pay attention. And even with the general election, it felt like we were at a time, America was at a time when we were going to choose to demand better from politicians than people that lie to our faces and people that, that say things for partisan reasons that put people in harm's way. Uh, so in Clackamas County here, we did vote for Biden, and we also elected uh, Chairman Judy Smith and uh, new Commissioner Mark Scholl. And I, I saw that, um, originally thought it was a problem, and then she said all these comments regarding COVID um, right around Thanksgiving. She very brazenly decided that she was going to tell the entire world that she was going to violate the orders uh, that Governor Kate Brown set for our state. Uh, and she seemed to encourage other people doing it. And then went on Fox News, of course, to say that the, the COVID restrictions made – was the government treating us like second-rate slaves. Oh, um, I mean, seeing all of that type of – language from someone that I want to represent me, that is unacceptable. Um, so online, I started seeing a lot of people asking in different neighborhood groups. I was asking in Milwaukee Chit Chat who was organizing to recall Judy Smith because I just thought we have to say that that is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's interesting, too, the timing of her initial result, of her initial remarks this was even before she was in it's officially sworn in and she's making these inflammatory comments and immediately giving everybody voters regret. <laughs> but then, yeah. you know, and it's, it's funny, the, so, well, it's not funny actually, it's quite s sad. Not only did Commissioner Smith, Tootie Smith, say those things and cause this kind of, uh, discord and or this kind of a response from the community but then the other commission another commissioner a newly elected commissioner did as well mark Scholl. share with us what you know about that situation and how it affected your out what you're doing um well uh, a female by the name of chris made a website uh, that is called mark's i, I believe it, it was a blog documenting mark Scholl's racism hmm. um and she gathered a lot of information that he had posted over his Facebook, documented it all, posted it online, and made a lot of us available that he had said these remarks. And I want to start off by saying that, you know, I saw that link and I knew that what I was about to see was bad, and then I went to the page to look at his remarks, and they were worse than I could have imagined. 
the amount of Islamophobia and racism and, you know, hate toward immigrants that he that he embodied in his messages show us a person that I think if the Clackamas County voters knew, they would have never voted him in. And, you know, recently, um, as you may have heard, there was uh, a push, there was a motion to strip Mark Scholl of his salary because of his comments. And let me tell you, I do not want, what, $8,000 a month going to Mr. Scholl. I think he makes about a hundred grand a year. Um, Oh my goodness. This money going to Mr. Scholl and then Tootie Smith blocked it. Went against Robert's rules of order after they had asked for clarifications from lawyers and, and blocked this motion that was on the table to do the type of action that the Clackamas County voters are demanding right now when we call for Mark Scholl to resign. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you really see them pair together and Partially, I, I hope that that is something that can help us, right? right. I want the energy uh, that, that we need to, to pull off a recall campaign that is this massive. And two, two big people that we need to get out might get that energy going. You know, on one hand, it's so discouraging that our elected that two people that we duly elected would be so uh, uh, would have such bias would have such bias oh, and, and that that to me is just so so unfortunate and um, Sherry let me ask you I know that you have done some work Tell me about your experiences with the grant from working with the the groundswell of support from the Facebook page. I remember seeing you on a Facebook page. You've been it's really expanded, hasn't it? Oh, that was Jeffrey and Anna and everybody. Uh, uh -huh. We all passed it around, but and, and explained. And I did some posts on uh -huh. on our page too yeah. about this uh -huh. about Tootie mostly because her completely defying the government's the governor's orders who's simply just trying to keep us all safe and healthy was uh, during the holidays was egregious it was ridiculous and and so i i need to figure out how to make a recall of this so i went to oregon city united's um facebook page and i saw a, an announcement about that so that's yeah. all on those guys i'm just right helping on. to monitor the facebook page but yeah people are mad right. they are mad and and i we have 1600 members on that facebook page it's um recall tootie smith uh you can search it on facebook page recall, or, uh, search recall it. tootie smith t-o-t-i-e yeah. smith yeah, um, did, uh, the the group is called Recall Tootie Smith because she doesn't give a toot about you. Yeah, because right. she doesn't give a toot about you. And uh, tell me about the community response to your efforts. Well, it's actually, you know, for, for me it's been incredible because I've gotten to meet so many amazing neighbors mm -hmm. in the past few months organizing this. There are a lot of people throughout all of Clackamas County in rural parts of Malala, throughout Oregon City. We have people from the Recall Dan Holiday campaign that I've advised, but a lot of people from my community in Milwaukee here, a lot of people, you know, medical workers, uh, people who, who want to be able to one day feel safe sending their kids to school. They're all, you know, coming to us to say that they don't want Judy Smith as their elected official. and. We actually have a website, Boot Tootie, B O O T T O O T I E dot com, and that includes links to our donation page. It's going to include link to volunteer signups um, and an intent to sign form, and that is going to be really, really important for us because we have to collect close to forty thousand signatures from Clackamas County voters mm -hmm. in order for to get our recall campaign on the ballot. Now, so let me ask you some best case scenarios here. Okay, so you got 40, you have to have the, you have to have 40,000 Clackamas County voters sign a petition. You gotta get their signature. And then it, I understood that it can't be on the ballot until after they have served six months. Six months, yeah. Is that well, correct? you can't file the petition 
agreement until they've served six months. So we can't file it before July, and then we actually have a 90-day period to collect those signatures, so it would likely go on the ballot around November. That is oh. reasonably the, the earliest we can do it, and that, that six-month window is just by the law of, of um, the state. You know what's interesting, too? I, I, I remember reading about that six-month window, and there's some pros and cons to that, obviously. It's, the pro is, is that... Um, it forces you to have to get your act together and, and, and organize. The con is, of course, that you can't do it in the heat of the moment. You have to have a premeditated plan of action. And so I guess what I'm asking, do you feel good about the pre, your premeditated plan of action in regards to this recall? Yeah, I think we have we have a good plan and we have a good team of neighbors and of course still taking volunteers, but I think the time could help us, especially because the more we're able to prepare for that 90-day signature period, uh, the more likely we are to be able to make that mark. Um, so I, you know, I'm hoping that the six months will serve as a really good thing for us to prepare. Honestly, I, I don't see the downside so much about not being able to do something uh, spur of the moment, but I do wish that I could not have them as my elected representatives for the next, you know, eight months. I I watch the weekly meetings, a lot of the weekly meetings that you can watch online on YouTube from Clackamas County, and every single week I'm thinking to myself, like, this cannot be, this cannot be the best of us. Well, see, and that's another pro, Anna. We have six months to calculate up all of the things that are, that support our justification to have them recalled. Lord only knows they're going to say more things that to, to, to give you more and more evidence, Tootie will at least. I mean, you've got so much evidence against Mark. You know, I... We have evidence it, against Tootie. You no, know, I'm sure, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Hist her, historical. That, her, her, fo her public statements on Fox News, for goodness sakes, I don't want to mention. Yeah. You know, Anna, um, we've got about one minute left here to talk with you. Um, Please share with me something that you want the general public to know about what you're doing and what they can do to participate. So what you can do to participate, um, go to boottootie.com. You can sign up to volunteer. You can donate money to the campaign. Or you can just sign that intent to sign form. That really is the thing that I want the most people to do because the more we can identify people within Clackamas County that are going to be ready to sign that right now want Tootie Smith out of office. The more we can uh, start that period right after we saw our petition in July and get running toward that mark. That's good. Um, That's good. Also, mm -hmm. don't ever, don't ever forget to vote down ballot. I think good. this is what happens when yeah. people don't vote down ballot. That's right. Hey, you know what? I know that I'm getting close to the end here, and I am so appreciative of you calling in, and we're going to do this again here within the next six months to be yes. able to uh, share yep. more information with my viewers, okay? Well, that's great. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thanks a lot for calling in. You take care. Thanks, Anna. Bye-bye. Yep. Mm, wow, what a wonderful way to end this show. Um, boot 2 dot com yep. is the name of the website. I meant to if have you haven't you, heard about this it. issue and the comments that she has been said, that both her and Commissioner Scholl have said, uh, do your homework and learn more about it. Sherry, I've got one minute. Tell me something exciting that you've got in 30 seconds, that you got going on in 30 seconds. I'm getting certified in digital content, or digital digital marketing and brand management strategies. Nice. I'll finish my certification from Oregon State University in June. Very good, very good. How about you? My, uh, my tidbit for the day is my daughter started her very first, my 16 year old daughter started her very first job yesterday working for a doggy daycare. And she came home covered with dog hair with a big smile on her face. She was happy, happy, happy. So I hope that that same happiness is extended to everybody out there in the, my viewers. Thank you very much for watching. Keep the faith. Stay safe. And remember to vote. Remember to vote, folks. It's important. All right. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I know.